Let's talk about code. As a matter of fact, open up index.html. This might surprise you to know that a lot of people that actually purchase Dreamweaver spend most of their time in this button right here, the code view. The code warriors, if you will. Now, we're not here in an essentials class to dig too deeply into HTML and the code, PHP, JavaScript, all that stuff. But you do need to know it's there. And you might want to know this stuff anyway because you want to get into the code. That's where I started. I mean, I don't want this to be another story, but it's going to be. I started a long time ago, and I did really most of my code in a text editor. When we wanted to see what it looked like, well, basically what we did is we opened it up in a browser, decided if we liked it or not, and then moved on. Dreamweaver is a pure WYSIWYG editor, but that doesn't mean it can't get you into and work with the code. Now, I will admit that this program does code better than anything I've ever seen in my entire life. It's great, but it is nice to know the code. So we are in the code area, viewing our code for our index page. Go ahead and open up one more page. Go into Pages, open up Contact. Let's go back to Index right here. What I want to show you real quick here is all these buttons over here on the left and how they work with what we're doing in the code view. The first one is Open Documents. Now that might make you think that if you click it, you get to open another document. What it means is, do you want to open another open document? So we have two open, and you can see both of them here. If I click on this one, it'll open that one. If I click on this one, it'll open this one. Not really much different than clicking the tab button up here, to be honest with you. But it's just one more way to do it. Next button down is called the Code Navigator. Now you can click that to deselect it. Let me go back into Design for a second. If I come over to something like Info, and I want to see the code. Now I've got it disabled temporarily, but if I press Control Alt N, it will open up the Code Navigator. Now in the Code Navigator, if I touch any one of these, it will give me the attributes of what it is, which is kind of cool. I've got it disabled down here. You can turn that back off if you want to, which means you'll see that little icon appear every once in a while on the screen. And if you click it, you get here. I'd rather disable it and use it myself manually with a shortcut, but that's just what I want to do. If I want to get into the container or content or subheading, click on it right here. It will split the screen, and there you go. So it's a quick way to kind of go back and forth. Let's go back to pure code. Next button down right here is to collapse a tag or collapse a selection. For example, if I come here and select the stuff right there. And I click this button right here. It collapses that area. Now, why are you doing that? Well, give you more room. You lose a little bit of the clutter. You can work on what you want to work on. If you double click on it, it comes back. Now, let's say I just want to work on this area and I don't want to see anything else in the whole document. If we come back to this one here for selection and hold the Alt key down, it collapses everything except what you're working on. Now, you got two ways to bring it back. You can double click on these to bring them back, or you can click this button right here, which is expand all. Just ways to help reduce the clutter while you're working. That's all that is. This one right here is to select the parent tag. Let's go back into our source code here. And let's scroll down a little bit and a little bit down to about here. I want to find the parent tag for this group right here. So I can click anywhere in there that I want, and I can come over here to this button to locate the parent tag, and it will give me that area. So now I know where it begins and where it ends. I can, you know, add another piece to it, work on it, whatever I want to do. Let's go up here. Got a lot of braces and brackets and things. If I get in here, say right about there, the next button down right here is to balance braces. And if I select, it will give me what's within the balance of those two braces. And in coding, that's very important because now you know what stuff is inside that area. You can click anywhere you want to to try that again. In this case, just that one little tiny piece right there. It's in between the balance of those two braces. Next one down is to highlight invalid code. Now, if you click that, if you have any invalid code, it's going to highlight it for you. And you go through the document, it highlights in default in yellow. Next one down is word wrap. Now, if I turn that one off, you might be surprised exactly how much 
this stuff goes to the right. If I turn that back on, which I'm definitely going to do, it then wraps it based on this window right here. That's a good one, I think, to leave on unless you like going left and right. The next one down here is syntax error alerts in your info bar. If you turn that on, if you've got a syntax problem, it will alert you to it. The next one here is to apply a comment. Now we do that a couple of ways. For example, if I come up here right below head and click. Now if I go in here again to apply comment, you're going to see a whole bunch of options. The apply HTML comment inserts a specific one. Let me show it to you. It inserts an area like that, and I can then type in, this page was created by Andy Anderson, all rights reserved. Comments are exactly what they look like. They're comments. They don't really impact code. They're not used as code, obviously. They're comments, and they can help explain things. The best reason to use them is for things like, well, like I'm doing right now, let people know whose this is. You can use them for copyright information, all kinds of things. There is another way, though, that you can use them that I find kind of valuable. Now, let's go back over here again and look at the different ones that we have. We've already looked at that one, typical HTML. The next one, this one right here, it's very useful. You can use that to wrap around a selected CSS or JavaScript. This next one here inserts the type of comment at the beginning of each selected line of CSS or JavaScript. This next one down here, apply comment, inserts that type of comment at the beginning of a VB script. And we're not hooked up to a server, otherwise we'd have that one too. I'm going to go to this one, but first, let's go up here somewhere. Okay, we've got this AP div here. Okay, let's say for the sake of argument, and you do this a lot, whether you know this or not, is I want to disable it. I don't want to get rid of it. I just want to disable it. Maybe I'm going to use it. Maybe I'm not going to use it. So I'm going to select it right there. Then I'm going to go here again, and I'm going to go to Apply Comment. Now what you've done is you've turned that section of code off. You can now work if the system works better without it, or if whatever, you're trying something without it, you don't need it yet. But now you want to bring it back. Now that's the next button down. This one is Remove Comment. Now you might think that that means like the comment I made on This Is Mine, All Rights Reserved, it would remove it. No. It just removes it as a comment, but it leaves whatever was in it. So I decided I need this. I'm going to reactivate it. If I select it again and click this button, it removes the comments. Okay, that's how that works. Next one down is a tag wrap. If you want to wrap this in another tag, you can do that. This one right here allows me to look at recent snippets. Now, if I click that button, you'll see footers, basic brief text. If you recall from the previous chapter, we looked at snippets. And the last snippet we used was the one called footers, basic, brief text. If for whatever reason you want to insert that into the code, you can actually select the point, click the button, it will insert it, or you can go right to the snippets panel right here. Next one down is move or convert CSS. Now all our CSS is external, and you can see the call for it right up here but let's pretend that this right here is a piece of CSS. Now we spent three chapters on CSS, and one of the things that we went into was how do you take an internal code or an inline code and either convert the inline code into a rule or convert the internal to an external style sheet. We've already done that. This is just another way to do it. That's all this is. So when you look at programs like Dreamweaver, you might go into a page and right-click your mouse and have a context-sensitive menu that gives you what you want. At the same time, you might be able to press a shortcut key to do the same thing. At the same time, you might be able to go over to one of the panels over here and do the same thing. And undoubtedly, you'd be able to go to a pull-down menu and do the same thing. So there's got to be almost everything in this program, at least four or 40 ways to do it. It's not confusing. It's not designed to be confusing. It's designed to give you a choice on how you do it. I had a student say one time, I don't know why I've got six ways to do this. This is the way I always use. And I respond by saying, yeah, but they didn't know that, did they? Because that's not the way I use. I use this way. So yeah, there's a lot of ways to do things, but it's actually pretty cool. Now I'm going to collapse my properties down here because there's more stuff here, and I want to show you just a couple more things. This one is to indent the code. We get over here, and you want to indent. Now that does not influence how the code works. 
It influences how we see it and how we work with it visually. The next one down is to outdent. You want to go the other way. Last button is to format source code. Now, if I click that button, I get the option to apply source formatting to a selection. I've got a selection up there or the whole thing. Or I want to see what my formatting is about, so I click the format settings. They're actually in your preferences. And like spacing, tab size, line breaks, default tag case, lower case, you can change this all day long. It doesn't influence the code, it influences how you see the code when you're working with it, and that's very important. So when you're in pure code view, you have a whole bunch of stuff going down the left side right here. All of those buttons are designed to help you better visualize the code, find what you need, or modify it. Now let's go back to design. If it asks you to save it, say no. We're just looking around here. Same thing with this one. Okay, on to the next.